Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to T3 Live's recap. It is the fourth trading day of the year. My name is Scott Rutherford. I'm the Chief Strategic Officer. And another down day, you know, you turn on Bloomberg Radio or 1010 Winds and you're going to hear about China turmoil, uh, S&P worst start to 2016 or worst start in I don't know how many years. Worth <laughs> 2016, horrendous start. Last time they saw something like this was 2008 or so. And then you're going to hear all the comparisons. Is this like 2008? They're going to drum up all the fears of what happened then, the crazy meltdown. Um, I do think, like I said, entering this year, this is the first year in my 2016 report that we have a lot more downside risk versus upside potential, but I don't think the markets get cut in half. Um, I went on Bloomberg today and I talked about three different levels that I think we're going to you know, look at. Um, one of the micro levels we, we thought could be traded today, which before we get into that, held. We rallied off it a little bit. You made some early morning money, but then after that rally, I tweeted saying, you know, better buying off lows versus, you know, adding after a move like we saw in the first hour, especially since nothing really went with it. High beta tech was still weak. The, the Russell was still weak. The banks weren't green. You know, they had an S&P rally, but nothing went with it. So that gave you clues that all it was was a trade. And then the red dog reversal of the morning turned into another H cell setup like I went over yesterday in in that recap. So let's just go to the chart of the SPX and let's talk micro real quick. Um, first of all, you know, remember last time we were down below all the moving averages? Everyone got out, some people got short, everyone got tactical. This is what happened. You know how trends repeat themselves? Okay, well, here we are. You know, this was to start the year. Um, basically, the last day of 2015 to close below, so there was no real reason to have any swing account risk on below the 200-day moving average, okay, or and below the 8 and the 21-day and all these things. And then, lo and behold, boom, okay. Uh, you had a gap and go to the downside. We talked about can this level hold, okay, tried to hold for two days, right, <laughs> tried to hold right here, boom, inside day, took it out. So if you bought thinking that maybe this level holds, this was your out, right, and took out the prior low and you could have been out of the way well before this, and then obviously, boom, uh, another down day. So to me, you know, I'm thinking, which is why I put the, the chart out two days ago, saying that I put a 75% chance we at least test, you know, the, the lows of last year. You know, wh why wouldn't we? There's, there seems to be a, a lot of negative news out there. <laughs> you could call it what you want. You can call it, you know, people upset about, um, you know, the Shanghai, if you come to me, the Shanghai Composite um, being halted after 29 minutes, <laughs> second economy largest one in the world. They can't trade their markets. I remember here today, our system went down for three minutes and guys were losing their marbles. <laughs> Imagine at 29 minutes into the session, said, oh, you're done trading. <laughs> the kind of animosity and fear and angst that gets built up versus them calming the markets. Well, anyway, you know, the Shanghai is now down, I think almost 14% off for the year, <laughs> you know, um, so that, that spreads. You know, you have Europe that's down 7, 8%. And now, depending where you look, I think you know, the queues are almost, what they said, a bear market from highs to lows. And we had levels to watch depending on your time frame. Now, you know, we talked about what Fed Fisher said, basically saying they, f they front loaded a huge rally to create a wealth effect and that QE is gone. So there's nobody really buying <laughs> S&P futures anymore like they did for a few years when we couldn't correct. And then you have, you know, GDP slowing and then you have corporate earnings, which aren't going to be great and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You put them all together and when you're <laughs> below every moving average and technically weaker, you look at the, the negative side versus the bright side because, you know, stocks aren't acting well. When stocks aren't acting well, you know, all the negative stories start to come out as the tide goes out, you know, everyone's wearing their <laughs> whatever kind of shorts they're wearing. But anyway, let's go back here for a second. Um, let's talk about the spiders and just the, the, the trade that a lot of us did on the, on the VTF today. All right. First of all, you know, we talked about uh, on, a, on, a, on a bigger front, you know, time frame level, the, the what's it called, you know, the, the gap down that started the year that never got filled, giving the bears a lot of power. And then you had continuation to the downside. First, I thought that we would get down to here, which was a filling of this gap, which is where I wanted to test longs if things looked good. To me today, besides being really oversold, you know, they don't look so good. Um, you know, I'll get into that in a second, but, but overall, Filled the gap. Um, if you would have waited patiently, you know, you wouldn't have been in anything on this swing move. And still, I, I don't even know if this spot's going to work. You know, we'll see what happens tomorrow. You have another spot coming in right around here, you know, or another area. And then, then you just have points of reference. But um, let's go to the spiders for a second. Let's go to the five-minute charger so you can see the patterns that, 
that kind of you know, uh, showed their face today if you were trading short term. Because I showed you that ascending channel yesterday, the way you could have traded in first move, you know, off the bat above here. here let's go to a one minute first, actually. Let's do one more, one more little tactical lesson here before we just start looking at other things for tomorrow. Um, so you go to here, okay, let's go to the beginning of the day. All right, there's your gap down. Um, and remember, we talked about if you trade above the opening range, um, that's your spot to get long versus to close. If you don't have, like, if you're not waiting for, like, a red dog reversal point, well, here was your opening range. Okay, I think it opened right around um, 195.33, made a quick low, and then ignited right here. So this was my long. That was my spot. Okay, somewhere right around there versus the low. Quick move, you know, sold some, held higher. I remember buying a little bit of back. Nice bull flag. Could have bought a little bit more even here. Okay, and then another push up. And right away, the high here was 196.37. So that's $1.30 by what time? Not even 10 o'clock. That's a nice day trading move. Then it came back down. Okay. Still held in okay. Gave you a descending type channel here. Broke above it. So if you were in, still in tier one or you, you sold into the strength, you could have got into your you know, tier two here. And then it trended above this 21 day moving average you know, for this entire move. And then ran into um, the, the 200 day on the five minute which also happened to be yesterday's low, 197.60. So if you would have drawn your little trusty trend line here, if you wanted to do it that way or if you wanted to do it from here, you know, basically this was it. You know, this was move number one, move number two, broke here, you could have got out of the way. And then really, when, when I got out of the way, was right here. I said, look at this, you know, five minute head and shoulders top pattern. You have a left shoulder, head, right shoulder, Neckline from 197.50 down to 196.50, a dollar. That should take you at least down to, you know, back down to 195.50, your new lows. And then boom, that triggered that, and then it wound up making new lows. Yep. You could also call this the H cell setup pattern again. So here is your pole. So then it rallied up. Okay, if you were waiting to short this rally because you still think we're going a lot lower, you could have waited for the peak. Um, I guess maybe shorted here, you know, versus the highs. Okay, and then that could have been short number one around 197. And then, you know, you look at this and, you know, some guys will add through the low of the day because you think you're getting momentum through the bottom. So if you shorted here because you have this H a little higher, you know, of the H, <laughs> one time it's going to get you and keep going. But this time, you know, came down, 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 and then broke below here. This could have been your add. Cover some, came back, retested, and then came all the way down. So... You know, lots of different ways to, you know, if you're tactically day trading, you know, you could do that with anything. I'm just giving you uh, a, a little, you know, review session on the spiders because if you came in flat, you could have made a good $2, long it and chopped it up in there some way, or you could have got short into strength and then added through the prior low and, and, and made money that way. You know, because at the highs there, you know, Amazon was still down seven, eight bucks. Google was still down. Facebook wasn't rallying. Apple couldn't reclaim 100. The Russell was still negative. The transports were heavy. Um, the only thing that went positive was oil. So it gave you some clues that not, there was not enough green to carry it today. So let's go to the charts of um, some more of, uh, you know, what's what. Let's go back to, um, you know, let's go to some of the high betas because Google is still working lower. Um, if you look here on Google, I, oh, this, um, it's actually acting better than some of the other ones. At this point, you know, you have your point of reference right here. It's your new one. I still personally think that, you know, it's going to work its way down to here before you, you know, think about really sinking your teeth into. That's about 717, and it's still even above the 200-day, and it could even, you know, fill this gap even more. So for me, I think this is the more compelling spot in Google. You know, you just have to be patient and maybe day trade it along the way. Amazon's already in that, you know, gap type of thing. So Amazon is showing weakness compared to Google for now. Um, some guys tried to play it today and it's still working its way down. Um, this is a spot right here, which we're getting close to. And then uh, really, really, so somewhere in here, I feel like it, it's a better spot. Um, so continue to wait. Here is your breakout failure. Today, um, Facebook, which a lot of us tried to short early on because we saw the early weakness, finally broke to the downside of the range because they're getting to everything now. So Facebook, some guys you know, made some decent money short. Um, at this point, uh, you know, you look how tight he got in here, okay, and broke on the last day of the year, and then came up, 
tried to fill the gap and then turned lower. And I guess, you know, your next spot, you know, if, if well, she actually came into here now. Oh, sorry, I drew that a little, little messed up. Yeah, no, so this was, this was one spot that I went to. And now I guess at some point, let's hope that it gets here quick. You know, we could test a 200-day moving average, which I think will be a good viable scalp. You know, and then maybe this spot, if we happen to open up down tomorrow. So now it's getting stretched again. Um, today, it felt like the high beta names weren't as stretched because yesterday they all went positive and they burnt off the oversold condition. So you've got to really think about all these scenarios when, you, when you're trading these things. Um, let's go to the Russell. I told you it was one of the first groups to make 2016 lows besides oil. And look at that. Boom. Through 2016 lows, which is one reason why I think that the S&P has to at least test the 2000. 16 lows, while these sectors are just going to continue to get annihilated because they're showing the relative weakness. Again, 200-day moving average. Below that, you stay below, you get out of dodge. So again, a lot of people are thanking me for the, this rule, and this rule could save you a heck of a lot of money without having to guess. When stocks are above the 8 and the 21-day moving average, you try and be long them. You try and be in a portfolio approach, especially if it's sectors. When they break the 8 and 21-day, you kind of get out of portfolio approach this way, if things correct and it's kind of you know, minimal, you could test a 50-day, you could test a 100-day. If a sector or a stock breaks to 200-day, and it's not just like one of those fake outs for a day to three days and stays below, it shouldn't even be an investment and you should probably stop trading it unless you're shorting every rally until something crazy happens. Every sector that I've gone over has, that shows weakness are, are not showing it you know, from highs, they're showing it below the 200-day moving average, especially the ones in these bear markets. Look at the XLE. XLE broke the 200-day moving average here. So if you use that rule, besides trends and besides levels and besides everything else, you, know, you would not be caught in this XLE mess, okay? especially with the head and shoulders top. And now this, too, is that new move lows, one of the weakest sectors out there, not above the 200-day, below it. So that's your signal to not <laughs> be invested there. Same thing with the, 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 the transports. How did this happen? That's what people say. How did it happen? Well, you know what? You don't ask questions. Okay, it was above the 200-day during this entire rally besides this one little bleep below. Then it broke right here. And then what did it do? Stayed below, stayed below, and then accelerated down. A lot of the stocks in that group, UPS, FedEx, you name it, you, know, you do not need to have your hard-earned money in something that institutions don't have their hard-earned money in. And especially trade something that's, you know, now it's obviously a little oversold, so maybe tomorrow you get some kind of bounce or something. But I'm just saying, you don't sit and hold your nose and go in the water, especially with something over, under the 200-day. These are the type of rules that keep you safe when you're in some kind of cyclical bear market, which we might be in. Um, you know, we just had a six-and-a-half-year bull run. So we could be in this type of market, you know, the whole year. So you better be careful and be patient and know your levels and have your system. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into more stocks and more sectors. I'm going to get into real quickly Apple. You know, a lot of guys said thank you so much. I used to be such a big Apple bull. I, well, I was, I, <laughs> Apple's been in an uptrend for a long time. Wouldn't you want to be a bull when it's above it? You know, until what happened to Apple? Apple broke um, its trend right here, got below the 200-day there, became a decent trade, broke back below. And then right here is when I started to not like Apple again because I was in it. 115. Okay, where is it now? 96. Could have saved you you know, a decent amount of points, and you could have made some decent money short if you like to short things. And then right here, we talked about 105.50. I texted it, I think, or tweeted it last week. I'm like, you know, Apple broke 115, get out of Dodge. If it breaks 105.50, there's nothing till probably 92. And now it closed on lows, and that's where, you know, then I get the 92 from. I didn't come up with a feasibility study or a think tank. I said, okay, this is your August low. It's probably going to come here and test it, and we'll see what happens there. That'll be the first time I try and stick my teeth into it, depending on how it gets there. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been a long week. Uh, I think some guys uh, had a good week. I talked to a lot of my friends, you know, that, that love to be short, and they were foaming at the mouth, and they made a lot of money this week, and congratulations, you deserved it. You know, the technicals were pointing to that, and if you were comfortable enough, great job. If you got out of the way, you know, okay, too. Um, you know, that's, at least if you make a lot of money in up tapes and you're kind of on the sidelines on down tapes, that's fine. And if you happen to have got a little paper cuts, this week trying things, you know, it wasn't easy either, you know. Every short trade almost had to be overnight and it was hard to be short overnight and then you had to really be surgical, otherwise you could have been squeezed out a lot of different times from those shorts. So it hasn't been an easy week. So, but at least there's big ranges, there's volatility. You know, today you could have made 
something within $2 on the, on, the, on the long side in the spiders, and then you could have made another 2 to $3 on the short side of the spiders, better than a 40 to $0.80 cent or $1.20 range. You know, Google and these guys are starting to go 10 to $30 in ranges, and Facebook's starting to go 3 to 6 So the bigger the ranges, you know, the better we could dissect them and make money intraday because, you know, there's more to take off the bone either way versus, you know, when the market's only moving a half a percent a day or a quarter percent a day. So be optimistic that these big moves are, are probably not going to go away anytime soon. So you got to learn how to trade them. So, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, last night I was flat overnight. Tonight I'm flat. You know, I was kind of, I'm kind of thinking to myself that tomorrow, the future, you know, after hours, maybe if the futures go a lot lower, I might try some. Everyone's thinking that the China market, you know, lost, you know took off the halt and, and uh, it's going to be crushed tomorrow. What happens if, you know, it opens down, reverses, and closes strong, we'll probably be up. So I don't think this is a night to be short, okay? The last few nights, if you were short, you got paid. Tonight, try not to be short, or at least be short a little bit, and, you know, if you want to continue. You know, I think at some point, with the oscillators minus 70, we're going to get some kind of rally, whether it's tonight, whether it's Monday, it's going to be somewhere, and you don't want to get caught and give back money if you made a lot of it from the short side. I don't think these are going to be the huge, huge earth-shattering rallies, but I think at some point, you know, there's going to be a decent, you know, tradable move where we'll be able to make money, and then you can put your shorts back on into strength versus, you know, down here when we've been off for six days. And that's it, you know. <laughs> if I were you, I'd go out and have a drink, go to dinner with your wife, have some fun with your friends if you're not married, or your husband. Um, go out, with, you know, just release a little stress and, and don't beat yourself up and it's only the first week of the year and be you know the one thing to take home is that there's going to be big ranges lots of volatility and if you're prepared enough you'll probably be able to make money and it's, i don't think it's going to go away anytime soon have a great night